Mr. David Abdullah, a trade unionist from Trinidad and Tobago, has always been at the center of social and political controversy. He's here with us in our studio. Carib Nation is up next. I am Paul Nehru, Tennessee, and I would like to welcome you to Carib Nation. Today in our studio, we have a very interesting man who will speak to us about Trinidad and Tobago and about the Caribbean. He has always been at the center of controversy in the social and political developments of his country. And in recent times, he has returned to that center of controversy. We here in Carib Nation, are very, very happy to have him with us in our studio. David, welcome to Carib Nation. Thanks, Paul. It's very good to see you. We haven't seen each other for quite a number of years. Yeah. And we and, should um, meet in the Caribbean and not here, but it's good to see you. Great. And um, as you mentioned, I'm looking younger, and I'm very happy <laughs> about that. Hey, David, you always have been at the center of controversy. And today, I want to talk to you very straight and very tough, because you deal with uh, and lived a a subject, an organization, a movement that is very close to my heart since I've been 21 years old, the trade union movement. But before we get there, can you tell me a bit about the movement for social justice that you are the leader of and that became a partner with the People's par Partnership, which is now the ruling coalition in Trinidad and Tobago under the, the Prime Ministership of Kamala Passat. Now, why in the last election, you as a trade unionist decided to get involved with a movement for social justice, which sounds more like an NGO, but you ended up with a political party. Why? Well, we had been working, Paul, in the labor movement, in addition to being the, well, I was for many years, 30 years, the head of the Education and Research Department in the Oil Workers Trade Union. 2008, I became the general secretary of the union. And from 2004 to earlier this year, I was also the president of one of the trade union federations, the Federation of Independent Trade Unions and NGOs, um, which involves the Oil Fees Workers Trade Union, Communication Workers Union, Youth Council, and a number of other organizations. You went through the whole of civil and society. We have it civil was society. A, a big alliance with it, trade unions and NGOs, That's no faith-based organization involved? No, we had no faith-based, but we had community-based organizations, farmers' organizations in the Federation. And in, the, in FITON, which is the acronym for the Federation, we did a lot of the mobilization against the Patrick Manning government at the time over the misallocation of resources. Mr. Manning was building a lot of you know, fancy buildings downtown Port of Spain rather than dealing with the and, ordinary and he has infrastructure. Been able to do that because Trinidad is a country that has produced oil and has a big income from the oil sector. Both oil and, and gas. Oil, oil and natural gas. Right. And we, the, the, the national income of the country tripled between 2001 and 2008. That government, was when Manning was in government. Yes, and, and government revenue also tripled in that time. But yet, basic infrastructure for people, water, housing, roads, and so on, were not being addressed. Food prices were going sky high, and a number of other issues. And we had done a lot of mobilization, including against corruption. When you say mobilization, what exactly do you mean? You, you, mean you go on the street, we you protest, you keep meetings? All, all, of, all of the above. So we led major demonstrations. We had um, a petition campaign against high food prices. We had 50,000 people signing that petition. Now, if you were against Vigils. high food prices, I assume you're speaking about basic food, like like, like rice, like what else? When, when you say prices, well, gas, oil, what? Well, you know, all all food prices were going up. Imported food, local food, you know. And uh, which is more important for the diet of your country? Because if you go to Mexico, they will tell you tortillas. You know, yeah, you gotta have some tortillas. What is it well, you have to have there? Well, I that mean, it makes the people really get mad. 
Well, I don't think there's any single item that oh, would well, include. Well, a couple of them. Well, obviously things like like flour, um, you know, rice. Pr rice, yes, but but sugar. other things. Well, sugar prices are relatively low, but then the prices of chicken, chicken. and and so on because of feed prices going up. Chicken what about prices duck? Are you going people up. love duck curry in Trinidad. Yes, but ducks are people will grow their own. Okay. The reason ducks, why but, I so, ask yeah. you this is mm -hmm. that when you are protesting and you mobilize against mm -hmm. high food prices, mm -hmm. because this is a global movement. Mm -hmm. People are protesting against high food prices, whether in Greece, whether in the United States, all over the world. What I want from you is, what did you suggest to the government that they should do? Is it to subsidize uh, food prices, or are they? Or did you recommend strategies on how they could have food security? It was basically strategies for food security. Increasing domestic food production is, is vital. Um, supporting the small farmers and so on making land available um, for people to engage in agricultural production. And none of these things have well, well, Those were not being done. In fact, farmers' lands were being bulldozed for housing. Um, the second thing we, we proposed was that there should be a fair pricing mechanism so that imported food could be tracked so that middlemen um, and merchandisers would not increase unfairly the price of food so that we could make control to some extent food prices using market mechanisms. And also we supported major um, support for farmers, subsidies for farmers in terms of subsidizing the price so that they could get a decent income and consumers could get and did food. You, did but you those make, things were not implemented. Yeah, and did you make recommendations in that also for job creation? Because uh, food prices could rise and could be difficult for those who have a job, but for what's the unemployment rate in your country? Well, the unemployment rate was falling, but a lot of it was, it was gov falling. Yes, but government, a lot of it was government employment, part-time okay. employment, casual employment. So we recommended- seven-day jobs? They usually that kind of thing, so. yes. So we recommended that some of those people be engaged in the agricultural sector rather than doing- To have sustainable employment. That's right, and therefore providing labor for farmers because farmers were having problems with uh, accessing okay, labor. Okay, so you had this great protest movement and it brought you out on the streets. You moved away from just dealing with your oil workers and collective bargaining. That's right. And you reached out to the wider society because the oil union has some resources so you could do that. You've been in their education and training for so many years and very conscious and so forth. So you got that. What made you now go and get involved well, yes, I mean, as, into yes. the political? So, in, a, in essence, we really forced Mr. Manning, who was the Prime Minister in 2010, to call the elections early. And he himself has admitted that. How many years did he call it? Two and a half years early. We had been working on a, on a political organization, a number of us as activists in the labor movement, youth okay. activists, community activists, and so on. Um, but we were planning to launch the party sometime in 2010. When you say the party, you're movement, for movement for social That's justice. That's right. So we as were, an alternative to the PNM. As an alternative to the PNM and the UNC. And the UNC. At so the you time. saw yourself as a third force. That is correct. Good. But what happened was that several things started to cascade. The political situation was very dynamic. First of all, Mr. Bas Diopandi, who was a long-standing leader of the opposition party, as it was then, the United National Congress, the UNC, lost the leadership of the party to Mrs. Kamala Prasad Bissessa in January of 2010. And that brought about a new vibration in the country. Then Mr. Manning decided to, to call the election early, and there was an agreement to have this coalition. Now, we felt in the labor movement that we had done all of the mass mobilization against Mr. Manning. And why should we therefore stay out of the political fray? We had as much right as Labour to be participating in the political process as anybody else. Because historically, um, Labour has supported parties, parties have gotten into government, and those parties in government then turned their backs on the Labour movement and attacked the very people who put them there. So we said, well, we ought to be there to be part of the process and to try to shift the paradigm um, in the coalition arrangement in the interests of Labour. And we did so to some extent in terms of the manifesto and the Faisabad Declaration, which brought the partnership into agreement, into, into, into um, effect. So that and partnership, People's Partnership, was made up of... Five the, political parties. The Movement for Social Justice, the UNC, United National Congress, the, which is predominantly an Indian-based party. Yes. And then Dukaran's party. The Congress of the People. Congress of People. The National Joint Action Committee, no, the old NJAC, party. which is an old... Black Poli Power Movement That's from right. the 70s. And the Tobago Organization of the People, which is a Tobago-based party. And a Tobago-based party. Right. So the five of us, in a sense, gave a representation of Trinidad and Tobago. But the big political base, as known was the electorally, was the United National Congress. Correct. Correct. So how did, 
so what happened? You won the elections. The partnership won the elections. We got 29 of the 41 seats. And one of your leaders, McCloy, they made him a minister, minister of labor. So what happened? Yes, Were you he happy was, you got a minister of labor? You're in government. Well, yes, we, um, we negotiated. Um, we had one person elected. We had two. We contested two seats as MSJ. McLeod won his seat. Oh, and you, you contested two seats as MSJ. MSJ yes. Where did McLeod win his seat? In Pointer Pair constituency. In Pointer Pair constituency. Yeah. And, and, um, when is that we, a multiracial constituency? It is more heavily, more heavily in North Trinidadian, okay. but it is, it is multi, multi, M yes. And um, we... What was the other seat? The Labre seat. Labre seat. Is yes. that predominantly Afro? It, it, it would be predominantly Afro. Um, and who won that seat? The PNM won it, but we did better than any other um, So you only won party. one seat? The one we that, won one out of the, the two. The one that McLeod won. That is correct. Okay. Um, so we had one person in the House of Representatives, and then I was made a senator. Oh, you were a senator? I was a senator. I was offered a position in the cabinet. Um, you were? Yes, I what, was. What and I ministry? Down, the Ministry of Social Development and the People, which was a major ministry. So you ministry. had a chance to go implement everything you talked about over the years. What well, happened? Well, several things, several things. I mean, and this discussion was, I was part of the leadership team of the partnership. I yeah. used to convene the, the leaders' meeting of the partnership. Of course, I know you and, do hard work. And You're a serious we were, I was part of the discussion three days after the election, which was discussing the composition of the cabinet. That's when the prime minister offered me the position. And I turned it down for two reasons. One, somebody, one of the lead main people in the party had to stay in the party without portfolio to do the work of building the party. Remember, Which we were new, MSJ. The, the, yes. the movement for social justice? That is correct. We had to build it because remember, we, were, we had just... We hadn't planned to be a political party at that time. So you, di yeah. you didn't go into the government, but one of your leaders did, McLeod. Yeah, well, I didn't go into the cabinet. You I mean, didn't I go was, into the cabinet. I was a senator, but you therefore. And a senator. I, was, I contributed in caucuses to ideas. And oh, so, so you on. did. You were part of the governance structure. I was, I was part For of the governance long? structure. For how long? For how many months? Two years. Two For years. two years. Yes. What did you achieve as a senator in two years as a voice, not only of the movement for social justice, but the number of years that you have been a very important advocate for the grassroots, what what? Did well, you I think achieve? I think there are two things, and and it's not necessarily related to to government. Um, I mean, in terms of government, one I did try to have ideas and proposals to resolve many issues. Um, as the leader of the MSJ f earlier this year, I took over the leadership from McLeod in January of this year. I interacted with the when other leaders. When you say took over, you mean you were elected? He re resigned as and you a leader. were deputy. No, I was the chairman of the party. Oh, so, so then I, you automatically... I, I moved from chairman to political leader okay, on good. the basis of a decision of the activist council. Okay, good. Yes, when he decided to step down from okay. that position. But um, in terms of, of trying to move the governance forward, which I think is more important than what you can do necessarily just in cabinet or in the Senate, um, I think that we were able to identify by our statements and our activity, both in and out of government, the need for a different kind of political arrangement in the country in terms of, of a politics that is not based on ethnicity, a politics that is based but on... But the PP was supposed to be a grouping of all of you, the, of all ethnic groups. What happened? Essentially, and how different were you talking... Is essentially, it the same? Essentially, the UNC as the dominant party continued in its old culture and the old politics of ethnicity, and therefore discrimination was Continued? taking place, yes, and the politics of so corruption So what the other partners continued. had to say? They were unhappy, and, and some of them made public statements. Basically, the, the COP and ourselves made public statements. The other parties did not make public statements. Okay, let's, let's stick yeah. to this a bit. Now, we have in the trade union movement in Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean, the name McLeod, for a number of years, is associated with the Oil Workers Union. He was president for Your name years. also. Yeah. But he was the president general and all that. He's become minister of labor. The classic question. We have in Guyana this guy, um, Gopal, uh, was big in Nasi Union. He's now minister of labor. What has McCloy delivered for labor? And particularly, one, the oil field workers, who recently had a big dispute with the government and got nowhere. And secondly, what has he delivered for the social movement as a whole? Yeah. Well, a, a couple of pieces of legislation that he's brought to Parliament, the minimum wage in, was increased. From what to what? It was increased from, um, from oh, to, it went up to, to, to about $12, $15 an hour. How much and US it was is before, that for our... About $2.50 US, but it, it increased by about 30% on the, on the so, his leadership. So right now the minimum so, wage in TNT is about two fifty US an hour. 
Yes, it'll be okay. about hundred dollars TT a day. Okay. For an eight hour work okay. day. So he achieved which is a, about a raise 15, in the minimum wage. Yes, yeah, so That's a very salaries. important That very was a important. major one. He had to fight hard for that because But he won it. He won that battle. And secondly, he um, introduced improvements in the Maternity Protection Act, increasing paid for maternity women. leave for women from thirteen weeks to fourteen weeks in When keeping they get the a child, they could go and leave. They, when they well, are from, from the time they, they leave work to, 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 to have the baby. To have the baby. They, yeah. they are 14 weeks paid, guaranteed, okay. full paid maternity And this is only public sector workers or across every the single country, worker, private sector every, public? Every single worker. So he woman. achieved at least two single things. Yeah, and he's working on some other pieces of legislation as well. Now, um, those are two specific benefits for labor. Now, as Minister of Labor, he also did help to mediate um, and conciliate a number of disputes, including the petrochemical dispute. So when you said the union did not get what anything, that's not true. What was the nature of your dispute that was, uh, with the oil field workers recently with the government? What was the problem? We had, we had negotiations in major companies at, um, at the Petroleum Company of Trinidad and Tobago, National Petroleum Company, TN Tech, the Electricity Commission, the Power Generation Company. We issued strike notice um, for Petrotrain, the petroleum company. We did not actually go on strike. And Following the issuing of strike notice, he mediated the dispute and removed the wage offer, salary offer from 5% over three years to 9% over three years. Given the to move it up or down? Up, up. We, we increased it. We almost doubled the wage, the wage offer that was and on the And you were able to achieve that? We got that, yes. And, and he did play an important so role So what's your problem that. with the government if you were able to get that? Well, the fact of the matter is that it took, it took a year of mobilization and demonstrations and, and, and many other protest yeah, but that's actions. that's part of life, so... The government could have could have resolved that matter a year before. So did they lose a lot of money in terms of having detained? The, the government lost money in terms of workers taking protest action. There's no doubt about yeah. that. Even and though the workers strike, lost money too in the period. Workers would have lost some, but they would have gained overall because you know you make a sacrifice now, but you could recoup that going okay, forward. But so it's important. Let me just make the additional so point. So what is the situation now with the present government? How would you rate them? I teach, so I usually use A, B, C, D. You give them an A plus, the present government? No, the government is failing. It's so you failing. give them what, an F or a C? They, they, yes, it's, it's, it's way below a C. Way below D, a C. D minus to F. Because, because of governance. So let me, let me, let me governance. Governance. For example, um, they are engaged in actions which are ministeri ministers are abusing their ministerial Abuse office. Abuse of power. Abuse of power. Mm -hmm. And then we had a major crisis of governance um, in September when um, a piece of legislation, a, a one clause in a, a, a particular bill that we had passed in the parliament was proclaimed secretly and selectively, which would have enabled two major financiers of the ruling party to get out of jail. And, um, they had and did the PNM approve that? We all did, I will, yes, but we did not, at that time, at that time, the law was not supposed to go into effect right away. And therefore the issue, because other things had to be put in place beforehand, but the government went, the cabinet went unknown to the, to the parliament and the country and passed one part of that piece of legislation. No, no, whatever that legislation is, what it was intended for, to get a man out of jail or two men out of jail? No, it was generally supposed to abolish what is known as preliminary inquiries in the judicial system. Oh. But what it provided for was that people who had matters, well, had, who had committed an offense, allegedly committed an offense more than 10 years ago, would not go to trial unless okay. the trials, unless the, the, the charges were for serious crimes like okay. murder, kidnapping, rape, and so on. Uh -huh. But serious fraud and money laundering were not included in those exceptions. And these particular cases, there's allegations serious, in that direction. Serious fraud. Serious correct. allegations. That's right. And they were to be extradited to the United States. Oh, well, that's serious. And the attorney, they, they, they appealed the decision of the attorney general to extradite them. And the judge determined that they should be tried in Trinidad and Tobago in a local court, which is fair enough. Which is a good thing because in the sense that um, if you're going to defend whatever is left of your national sovereignty, there's been a debate in Colombia and so forth, except that in Colombia the judges get killed and they, everybody gets killed. Yeah. So there was an argument that the United States had the kind of capacity uh, to bring them out there, yeah. but there was always this question of sovereignty. So it was okay to, to try them in a local court, but this piece of legislation and this particular clause, if it went into effect, would have prevented them from being tried in a local court. And Trinidad is not yet part of the Caribbean court? Only for, but yes, but it wouldn't apply for, to this. It wouldn't apply no, to no, this. Because we only apply for, um, 
for certain matters okay. in terms of Specifically the CARICOM treaty matters yeah, and not, not criminal. Uh, so, so this would have, this particular clause, Section 34 of this Act, would have allowed these two persons not to be tried in Trinidad and Tobago okay. and therefore would have obviated the decision of the High Court okay. judge. Now, and, and there was a huge uproar and there have been tremendous mass okay. protests in the country. So there's a governance issue. Major governance okay. issue. Okay, I'm going to shift a bit from Trinidad. We may come back to it if we have some time. I, w I would like to use this opportunity because you don't pass by very often. And so let's get your thinking. What is going on with CARICOM? That thing looks like it's dead. It certainly stalled in the water. The whole idea of a Caribbean single economy is going nowhere. We have achieved, to some extent, a Caribbean single market. Give me market. one sentence. Why the single market economy has not been implemented? Because our leaders did not have the courage to implement it and instead ran behind the Europeans to agree to an economic partnership agreement or a free trade agreement with Europe. So we put all of our energy in the negotiations for this economic partnership agreement and for the implementation of that rather than focusing on the implementation of the single market. So what's going to become economy. of this CARICOM? It seems they have no money. The Europeans usually finance them, but they seem to have all lost the political will. The only thing they recently were able to agree on was to support the, a Dominican candidate for the head of the Pan American Health Organization. But we have not heard of anything. There was this big study that was being done about reorganization of bureaucracy. Anytime the Europeans are involved in anything, it's about bureau reorganizing bureaucracy. It's not really addressing the problem. Should we dissolve CARICOM and just have a heads of government meeting every two years for them to review stuff and some coordination? Sh isn't the Caribbean rich state where it's so marginalized that perhaps what's happening now should be deepened? A lot of them, St. Vincent, Dominica are now in Alba. There are some resources there through Venezuela. They are taking progressive positions and so forth. Uh, the United uh, South American Union, the Union of South American Nations, Brazil is, a, is in the middle of that. Yeah, Can't sure, we yes. face reality now, or what do we do? No, I think I think we need to integrate more with Latin America in terms of trade and economic activity. That is that is for certain. But we we ought not to do so on the basis of of bilateral arrangements of single countries because they're way too small. But they've been doing that, and they have not even been reporting to CARICOM when they have. Which that. which is why we need to have a stronger CARICOM. We need to, at the political level, the problem really lies at the level of political leadership right throughout the region. Your and, movement, and, your movement yes. is very important, movement for social justice. You've been working with NGOs. You have links throughout the Caribbean. Why don't we start a movement in the grassroots now that the Secretary General of CARICOM should be elected by a referendum throughout the CARICOM? Well, we, you know, we initiated many years ago the Assembly of Caribbean People as a grassroots I process. I know about that. That's right. Yes. And it's still functioning, not as active in the English-speaking Caribbean as it ought to because... Where it, is it active? It is very active in Haiti, in Cuba, in Dominican Republic, in the, in the French-speaking islands, Guadeloupe. Why is it so we are the ones that always take initiatives and then after a month, two months, think, a year, two years, we're left behind? I think the English-speaking Caribbean, even at the level of the NGOs and the trade union movement, there's again a loss of vision. And people have been focusing very much at the micro level, at the workplace in terms of well, trade unions. What do you think about the idea and that a Secretary General of CARICOM should be elected? I think that's a very positive thing. I think that's very positive. Because how else are you going to find But then what you have to do, what you then have to do is empower that Secretary General. Because at the yes. moment, that Secretary General under the CARICOM Treaty does not have much power. He's a, he's a bureaucrat, he's a technocrat, yes. rather than somebody who can actually implement decisions. You need somebody so, there who is willing to risk their job and call it as yeah. it is. But that, and that when the heads that sit requires, and they make an agreement, you tell them and you go to the public and say, these guys that, said that, that they're going to do this. That requires the heads to be different. And this is why I'm saying that the crisis is one. Uh, that requires the work of political education on the ground so that we have a more conscious population that will Do we need elect. a Caribbean CARICOM political movement or what? I think that will Independent come. Independent of the political I, parties? I think that that will come. I think that... that Where will we get the finances for something like that? Well, you know, ordinary people can finance what they want. In other words, in the 1930s, people didn't have money, but they, they created a, a, a labor movement that was politically oriented, that put forward an agenda for federation, for independence, okay. for democracy, it and all of those things. It doesn't look too good in the Caribbean right now, but there was some good news. We became champions of cricket once again. <laughs> We were resurrected. We became world champions. Is that hope for us? 
Well, you know, interestingly, the, the, it, it was a slap in the face, I think, of the West Indies cricket board. It comes back to leadership. Oh, yeah. They because, were, because, 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 because they had kept Chris Gale Let's not out. talk about them. Tell me about the players. Those guys did well, didn't they? They did well. And um, the experienced players did well. You know, I, I was the one who negotiated all the collective agreements for the West Indies Players Association. You're serious? As industrial relations For those advisor. guys who won the championship? Well, the, 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 not that particular contract, but they, okay. they had the, the core contracts I Next negotiated. time you come back in Washington, let's talk about that. We'll talk about Detail cricket. because people are more interested in winning cricket. But in the meantime, one last word about Trinidad and Tobago. What is going to happen now in the political situation there? How would they calm up, calm, um, calm calm up. up Passat, UNC, uh, PP government is going to manage? Are they going to have elections soon or are they going to uh, see the period through? They have, there have been calls for an, an, an early election. I don't think they will call it. Cam don't no, so. I don't think they will call it unless, unless they're forced to by way of mass protests and the country becomes ungovernable by civil disobedience and protest action. Um, but the situation is very dynamic, very unstable politically. And um, my responsibility as leader of the MSJ and as part of the labor movement is to build consciousness and awareness so that we do have people coming together to represent their own interests in their own political movement rather than support the traditional parties. Do you believe in and I one think that, I think that because is going to happen. of time, is there a role for the Caribbean diaspora to work with the social movements in the Caribbean for a new Caribbean? Certainly, both in terms of the human resources and, and the knowledge So and you guys got to connect with us more. You got to come more often. This is and a start you know, of many Caribbean visits. And goes to 22 countries in the Caribbean. So you guys have to come. We try to do our part here in Caribbean Nation. We reach 22 uh, nation. Thanks to Larry Sinders, Jamaican, you know, Jamaican that gave leadership to that. He conceived this program, but we are now not only in the U.S., but 22 countries in the Caribbean. So we need to, communication is very important. So you guys got to keep us more informed. Certainly, and, and I mean, one doesn't have to come here, given the technology, we could do interviews by exactly, Skype and so on, exactly. and by phone we call, have and, to use and the by all means call technology. me. Whenever you're ready, call okay, me. I'll be I very appreciate happy to be on your that. program. I appreciate that very much. And I also do a radio program, so I'm going to get you the number and so you could call regularly and give us Look forward update. to that one. Well, we have listened to a very interesting young man, uh, Mr. Ab David Abdullah. He has a tremendous history in the trade union movement. He has been very consistent, very grounded in the Caribbean. And we have a lot of people like uh, David throughout the Caribbean. I, it's just a matter of us connecting with them and we in the diaspora here we have to get more connected we have to get more involved because a lot of us have migrated for one other reason or other reason and we are here in the united states one of the most powerful countries on earth we have to try and engage in more dialogue be better informed and do what we can to help each other so that this new vision that they are articulating from the caribbean for the caribbean that we could share it we could support it and we could make our little contribution. Uh, David, I'm very happy that you came. Um, please keep coming, and whenever anybody from Trinidad is coming,